Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how to teach column subtraction to your child so that they deeply understand it and become fluent and creative and confident with it. Once we've learned how to teach column subtraction I'll talk you through the common problems children face with it, how to address those and why it's important to do lots of practice and what particular bit of fluency we're looking for so that we know children are ready to move on. To understand this video, you will have needed to have watched the video on base 10 apparatus. Here's a link to it now. It's also helpful if you have watched the video on the foundations of subtraction, even if you haven't understood it all. It's great if you've got an idea of how addition and subtraction are linked. Here's a link to that video now. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how we develop a deep understanding of column subtraction with apparatus. Then we'll look at the formal written method and how we make sure our children can use that. Then we'll talk through the common mistakes children make and how to address them. And finally, we'll look at developing fluency. So let's get started by looking at the calculation 457 subtract 312. Well, first of all, we need to build the 457 with our base 10 apparatus. And then we immediately hit the first point where a lot of people go wrong because a lot of people will think you then have to build 312 with apparatus. You don't. You do that in addition. If we were adding those numbers, we would build both numbers. With subtraction, we are not adding those numbers. We don't need them both. What we need to do is to split the 457 into 312 and the rest and see what that rest is. So from that 457, it's easy to take out 312. And whatever remains is going to go into the answer. So in this picture, we've done that. 312 of the 457 has gone to the 312 and the rest has gone to the answer. And if we count up what that rest is, it is 145. And you don't have to do that vertically. You can split the number just into two groups, pull it apart into two groups left and right. One of them will be 312 and the other is your answer. And then we can check you've got the right answer by putting the two numbers back together, doing the addition that checks the subtraction. When you add your answer to 312, it should come to 457. So in subtraction, we don't create the number we're subtracting out of apparatus. That comes from splitting the large number. And some people try to make the number that we're subtracting disappear. Subtraction is about taking away, it's about it being gone. But it's much better if that number stays in sight. And we totally understand that we had a total, the number we're subtracting is one part, and we're finding the unknown part, the missing part. OK, let's look at a harder calculation where we're going to need to exchange. So this time we'll look at 457 subtract 182. What's going to happen here? Well, we can see how we can take away the 100 and the 2, but the 80 is more tricky. It's not easy to take away 80 from the 50. So we're going to need to break one of the 100s into 10 tens. So let's do that now. And once we've done that, then we can see how this is going to work. We're going to be able to subtract 182 now. So let's do that. And then everything that's not in the 182 is going into our answer. Let's move it down now. And the answer is 275. And once again, we can check that answer by adding 182 and 275, putting the apparatus back together to check we get back to 457. Let's look at an even harder one. This is 513, subtract 184. This time it's going to be really difficult to split that 513 into 184 and something else. It's easy to take out the 100, but taking out the 80 and the four are gonna be much more tricky. So we're going to need to break up that 10 so that we have 14 ones and we're also going to have to break up 100 to create us 10 tens so that we can remove 8 tens. Now we can take out 184 and our answer is everything that's left. That's 329 and again we can check that answer by adding the 184 and the 329. 
So that's the first stage of learning about column subtraction, actually making sure your child can do it physically with apparatus. Then we'll go on to the formal notated method. If we go back to our first one, we start with the ones. Seven subtract two is five ones. Then we do the tens. Five subtract one ten is four tens. And finally, we do the hundred. Four hundred subtract three hundred is 100. So the answer is 145. Now there are lots of problems with getting your child to do lots of these without exchanging. First of all, you don't know if they're working right to left or left to right because both work and they could be learning bad habits. And you also don't know if they're deliberately starting with digits in the top number and subtracting digits in the bottom number or whether they are just subtracting the smaller number from the larger number. Because there's no exchanging, all sorts of different methods work that are going to set up bad habits for the future. So when you move to the notated method, it is much better to go straight to a worksheet where you're exchanging at least once rather than doing worksheets with no exchanging because you're likely to set up bad habits in your child. So let's look at our second calculation, which was 457 subtract 182. We start with the ones. If it helps to have column headings, just add them. 7 subtract 2 is 5. We can do that in that question. Then we look at the tens. 5 subtract 8 we can't do. We don't have enough tens. So we're going to have to exchange one of the hundreds into tens. So we're taking away one of the hundreds to use it. So we've now only got three hundreds. Remember, this is what we actually did with the apparatus. Get the apparatus back out and remind them. And that means we've got 15 tens to play with now. Eight from 15 leaves seven. We've then got to take 100 from the three hundreds and that leaves two hundreds. So our answer is 275. Now let's look at the hardest subtraction we did with apparatus. 513 subtract 184. We had three ones and we couldn't take four ones from three ones. So we had to break up the 10, which left us with no 10s and 13 ones. Then we subtracted four ones from the 13 ones, which left us with nine ones. But we couldn't subtract eight tens from no tens at all. So we had to break up a hundred, which only left us with four hundreds, but gave us 10 tens. Then we can subtract eight tens from 10 tens to give us two tens and we're left with 329. We can check the answer by working out 329, add 184. 904 is 13, I'm gonna change 10 into a 10. We've got eight tens and one 10 and two tens altogether, so it's 11 tens, so we make one 10 and a 100. And we've got now five 100, so the answer is 513, which is very reassuring because that's what it should be. It's a really good idea to get your children to check their answers in this way. Although, of course, it may require some bribery, as might all the maths. But seriously, some of the best bribery you can give your child is your time and attention to work on this with them. When you really know what you're doing, it's precious time. OK, let's look now at some of the mistakes your child is going to make as they start practising their column subtraction. One thing that pretty much every child will do is they'll look at a pair of numbers where the one on the bottom is larger than the one on the top and they will just reverse them and subtract the other way and do 4 subtract 3 is 1. When they were adding, we didn't check which way they were adding because it didn't matter. Now it really matters got to be very disciplined. So this child is going to get the wrong answer. Send them back to the apparatus to work on it. Perhaps add their answer to the number you subtracted and prove it comes out wrong, so it must be wrong, something's gone wrong. Talk through this issue with subtraction that I explained in the last video as to why you can't just reverse them as you could with addition. You have to start with the digit in the top number and subtract the digit in the bottom number, even if this one is larger. Otherwise, you will get the wrong answer and you will have to do it again. Okay, next, your child will make silly mistakes. 
within the subtraction, you know, subtracting seven from 15 and getting nine, that kind of thing will happen. Send them back to the apparatus, make them sort it out. A lot of parents are tempted just to tell them what the mistake is, but they've got to learn from their mistakes. If you just slow down, go through it more slowly, make sure they deeply understand. You won't always want to send them back to the apparatus, but it is the most powerful way to make sure that they understand their mistake and to help them to learn from it. Third mistake they're gonna make is that they're gonna to want to work left to right. It's instinctive, they're still gonna to want to do that. Five subtract one is four. And then it gets confusing and some amazing children do actually find a way through this to get the right answer. Your child might want to explore that. Let them, encourage them, but at the end of the day, remind them it's much more sensible to work right to left because it's much more reliable, it's quicker, and you're much more likely to get the right answer. And finally, just as with column addition, if your child is confusing digit order and you think they may have dyslexia, use arrow cards. And that was all explained in the column addition video, so you want to have a look at that one. Right, developing fluency. Children need to do lots of practice and have all sorts of worksheets to download for free from my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching, and also from the links on my Rebecca the Maths Lady YouTube channel. And it matters to do lots of practice. Every time a child completes one of these column subtractions, they're doing two or three subtractions within 20. Now there are only a limited number of subtractions within 20, and over time they're gonna get fluent at them and they're going to become nearly automatic and as they go through this learning journey, they're laying down important foundations for all their other maths with that degree of fluency on those small subtractions. So it's really important they do this practice until they're fluent. One part of that degree of fluency they need relates to the fact they need the shortcuts when they're subtracting from numbers above 10. So within a calculation, they might be, there might be 12 on the top and they're subtracting five. They need to see this subtraction in two parts. 2 takes you down to 10 and another 5 gets you down to 5. So therefore the answer is 7. When the number you're subtracting from is greater than 10, they should not be counting down one at a time. They need to be doing this little subtraction in two steps. So you need to focus on that and make sure that your child is doing that. They're going to be fast enough to cope with the rest of primary maths. So it's perfectly normal to do column subtractions every day for several weeks and then to come back to them again for practice later in the year because that's what's needed to build the fluency with the small subtractions within 20 as well as absolute confidence with this method. So your key takeaways from this video is that your child must do column subtraction with apparatus. They must learn to split the large number into the number they're subtracting and the rest of it, which is the answer. If they can do that, even if they forget the formal method, they'll be able to work out the answer to the sum anyway. Then they need to nail that formal method. And as they do that, they will make mistakes, lean into those mistakes, send them back to the apparatus, take time to sort them out properly. And finally, they need to practice until they are fluent at all those small subtractions within 20 doing the subtractions that are from numbers greater than 10 in two steps, not counting down one at a time. You don't have to achieve all of that before moving on to a new topic, but you do need to achieve it all at some stage. But it's helpful to do quite a bit of work on it and to remember that you need to come back to it if you haven't achieved that degree of fluency with your child yet. That's it, well done. Thank you for taking this journey. Thanks for the time you're investing in your child. It is my passion to make sure every child loves their maths and is creative and confident with it. And I'm so grateful that you care enough to do that too. It matters for children's self-confidence. It changes them as people when they are fluent and creative and confident with their maths. And this time that you're investing is well worth it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments suggestions for improvement, encouragement is very welcome. If you have any stories of how you're getting on with your child, please share them in the comments if you can. If you'd like to be able to find this channel, again, remember to subscribe and click on the bell. And if you can think of any social media groups or friends who would benefit from knowing about this series, please share it with them. 
I'll be back tomorrow with the next video, which is about mental addition and subtraction at this level. In the meantime, enjoy your column subtraction with your child. Bye for now.